It's time to be creative in 3D and virtual reality, VR. It's time for Unity. In this tutorial, we're going to continue down our path of the VR beginner, the escape room from Unity Learn. In previous videos, we have completed these sections. We are now to implement sound effects. Tutorial beginner, it takes about 30 minutes. The radio actually playing. Let's click on continue. Now that you've learned to create basic interactable VR experience, you can use audio to make it more engaging and immersive. In this tutorial, you'll add static and contact sound effects to objects in your prototype room. You'll also add closed captions to make your VR experience more inclusive. Go ahead and press Mark Complete. Before you begin, in this tutorial, you'll use the VR Beginner Unity Project and your VR hardware before you begin. Open the VR Beginner Unity Project. You can see here we actually have it open. Check that your hardware is ready. If you're using Oculus Link with Oculus Quest, enable the Connect This Now through the Oculus app. I am on a Mac. If you're on a Windows, you need to have the Oculus software installed and you can use Oculus Link with the Oculus app. If you're using a Mac like I am, you're going to have to select Build from Android to test your app on your Oculus Quest device. Go ahead and press Mark Complete. Implementing basic audio sound effects in VR. You can add sound to VR experiences in Unity just like non-VR experiences. Unity can also spatialize the audio, make it sound like the audio source is coming from within a 3D environment. To use Unity's audio spatializing features, you'll need to make sure that, number one, the camera game object in your scene has an audio listener component. So the Unity can spatialize the sound properly through the headphone based on the position of your VR headset. Number two, sounds that are part of your VR experience have their audio source spatial blend set to 3D to be more immersive in the experience. This is already configured by default in the prototype scenes created using the custom menu in the Unity project. Let's go ahead and press Mark Complete. Add a static sound effect to an object. First, let's add a spatialized looping sound to your prototype room, a low hum for the fuse box. To add a sound to the fuse box game object, number one, in the hierarchy, select the fuse box game object. This is our hierarchy. So I'm looking for the fuse box. So you can see right here is my fuse box game object. And let's just, so I have to select it and I move mouse over this and I press F, it zooms to it. But I wanna make sure I am right in front of it. In the hierarchy, select the fuse box game object. Number two, in the inspector, select add component. Search for audio source and add the component to the game object. So you can see over here, it wants me to select add and we're gonna add an audio source. I'm gonna click here, type audio, and you can see right here, it's source. And this is the component we've added. Number three, in this project, go to assets VR beginner audio, find the SFX door hum loop audio file. So assets VR beginner audio. That is the project window down here. So I'm going to assets VR beginner audio. We have a bunch of audio files. They're looking for this one. So I'm actually just going to copy this and I can do a search here. That way I can find it. Number four, drag this file from the project window to the audio clip property at the top of the audio source component. Okay, so I have this here, but I have to go back to my fuse box over here. It has this audio source. So it wants me to drag this to here. And you can see they have a picture of what it looks like. In the audio source component, enable play on awake and loop. So over here, you can see play on awake is on and I want to turn on loop. So I'm going to make sure loop is on. Set the spatial bin slider to 3D, one in the numeric field. So you can see right here, spatial blend. We should select that to one. And you can kind of see here it says 2D and 3D. I can just simply drag this over and it's 3D, which is the value of one. Select the gray arrow to expand the 3D sound effects if it's not already open. So you can see right here, 3D sound settings, it's not open, so I'm gonna expand that here. 
Set the following property values. Value roll off to linear roll off, which means the further you are from the audio source, the quieter it would be. So again, volume roll off to linear roll off. So you can see volume roll off right here. It says logarithmic roll off. We're gonna say linear roll off. The minimum distance to point two, which defines the distance at which maximum value is reached. So the minimum distance is one. Let's make it a lot closer, which is point two, and press enter. Maximum distance to four, which defines the distance where the sound begins to play. So four should be here, not 500, it's four. So when we get four meters close to this, you will start to hear that buzzing sound. You can see they've left that here. Press control save to save your work. You can now test the sound effect. When you're on the teleporter next to the fuse box, you will hear the sound loudly. It will be much more faint if you create a teleporter further away. If you move your head, the audio will change as it would in real life. So let's actually do that. So I'm going to teleporter. I could add a teleporter here, but remember we added one up here already. And I'm gonna press F. This is the one that I added earlier. Well, we can do a simple duplicate. So I can right click and do duplicate. That way I don't have to add the teleporter beam and the teleporter stop and the teleporter start. I'm just gonna duplicate this one that actually works. So I can right click and select duplicate and then use my move tool. Let's say I have a teleporter beam here. And if I wanted to duplicate this as well, I don't have to right click. I can actually just do control D, command D on a Mac. You can see it duplicated again. I'm gonna select my number two. Maybe I want to teleport on this side of the table. And I'm gonna duplicate again. Just put something out here. So now I have four teleporter beams that I can kind of go to. So I'm gonna press mark complete. I'm not gonna test this now. I'm gonna test it at the end. Using closed captions in VR. Closed captions are a feature which can improve the inclusivity of VR experience. The learning project includes an example prototype closed caption system as an indication of how you can implement this in VR experience. Your prototype closed caption system is made of three scripts. A CC database, which associates a given audio clip with one of the multiple lines of text display timing for each line. A CC source, which can be added to an object that can have an audio source component like the fuse box and enables closed captioning for the object. And a CC manager, which checks for audio sources with closed captions enabled in the scene and displays the text when the user is in front of the object. These scripts are all located in Assets VR Beginner Scripts system. Let's go ahead and press mark step as complete. Add closed caption for the sound effect. Let's add closed caption to the fuse sound effect. In the project window, go to Assets folder, right click and select Create Closed Caption. CC database to create a new database asset. So again, in my project window, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna do create, closed caption, CC database. So that is down here. Assets, right click, create, closed caption, CC database. And you can see it made this file here. Press F2 to rename it to tutorial. I'm just gonna copy this. You can press F2 or you can just click it twice or you can actually right click and do rename. There's a bunch of ways to always do some one thing. Double click on the asset icon to open the database editor. So I'm gonna double click on this. It opens up this little database editor. In the project window, go to assets, VR beginner audio, drag this file. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna just do a quick search for it. From the project window into the tutorial CC database window. This is a sound effect you will add to the fuse box. So assets VR beginner audio. So let's just show you. But assets VR beginner audio has all these files in here. But remember I copied the name so I can just do a search. SFX door hum loop. Did I copy that correct? SFX door hum loop. And it's not actually finding it. So let's go back and let's see if we can find this. SFX, 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 SOCs. These are all C's. Door, hum, loop. It's weird that I didn't find it. Let's type that again. It's not finding it. But I just found it down there. 
Oh, look what happened. In the tutorial, it says door loop hum. You've actually, in the audio file, it's actually called door hum loop. So they have it backwards. On the Unity Learn page, it says door loop hum instead of hum loop. You can see that's the difference. I was like, why is it not being found? So it's actually right here, door hum loop. Drag this from the project window to the tutorial database window. This sound effect, you add it to the sound effect. So I'm going to drag that to from the project window to this two tutorials CC database window, which is this guy here. So over here, I'm going to drag my door home this to that. Select a new button which appears with the sound effect name. So that is this. And I guess we're going to have to expand this. And you can see this little fluff here. Select new line to create a new line of text in the database. Add humming. So you can see, I want to click right here. I'm going to type humming. And actually, I need to follow where I type is what's going to show. So they want us to actually just add in the brackets. So, so it looks like a closed caption. I'm going to add that inside of there. As the sound effect is more than three seconds long, let's create another line of text for the closed caption to see what it looks like in the Unity project. Select a new line again and set time to 1.5. And we'll come here, new line, we'll select this time to 1.5. And then now I'm going to type in more humming. This means that when the sound has played for 1.5 seconds, the second line of text will be displayed. You can now close the database editor window. So I can close this window. In the hierarchy, select the CC system game object. So over here, you can see system game object. In the inspector, use the selector button to the right of the database field to select your new tutorial CC database as the database the closed caption system reads from. So you can see over here, it's telling us in the database field, they want us to change that to select the CC database. So I'm gonna click on this Instead of using theirs, I'm going to select mine. Press Control S to save your changes. So again, Command S or File Save. Let's go ahead and press Mark Step as complete. Set the fuel box as a closed caption source. Now that you've added closed captions to the sound effect, you need to set the fuse box game object as a source for closed captions in the scene. In the hierarchy, select the fuse box game object. Let's come back over here. We're looking for our fuse box. There we go. And let's press F on our keyboard so we can just simply focus on it. Move here. In the inspector, select add component, search for and add a CC source component. You can see I'm going to do this over here. Click on add. I'm actually going to minimize my 3D sound for now. CC source. In the project window, go to Assets, VR Beginner, Prefabs, System. Let's go down here, Assets, VR Beginner, Prefabs, System. Drag the CC Canvas Prefab from the project window to the Canvas Prefab field, CC source component in the inspector. So again, dragging the CC Canvas Prefab from the project window to the canvas prefab field and the CC source. So I'm coming back here on my fuse box. I'm on my fuse box. Canvas prefab, it has none. So again, it wants me to take the CC canvas prefab and put it in the canvas prefab section, which is right here. So CC canvas, I'm gonna drag that and drop it right there. The canvas defines how the closed captions will appear. If you have more experiences with UI development for Unity, you can customize this for your VR experience. You can use the following fields in the CC source component to make a basic adjustments to captions display. Enable always tracked. This displays an arrow in the center of the user's view that points to the object with closed captions that are playing. This can indicate critical audio sources for the user. For example, those that give gameplay information. Set max distance to two. So you can see right here, they want us to change it from four to two. This is the maximum distance at which the caption is displayed. The fuse box caption will display when you are standing next to it, but will not appear when you're next to the table. Set scale above one to increase the default caption size or below one to decrease it. See scale is here. 
I can actually, let's just make it two. I'm gonna make it a lot bigger. Press control save to save your changes. So again, I'm just gonna do file save, which is our command save. You can now test the sound effect closed captions. When you stand next to the fuse box, the caption should appear. Cycling as the sound effect loops. You move back to the box table. You should not see the closed caption test. If you enable always track, you should see an arrow indicating the direction of the sound box. Press mark complete. So you can see we have one more thing that we have to add, and then we're gonna test all of these sounds. Add a context sound effect to your object. VR Beginner includes a custom system called SoundFX Player, SFX Player, which enables scripts to play SFX, special effects sounds. Prototype scenes created using the custom menu include the system by default. One feature of the Unity is a custom script to set sounds when the interactable object makes contact with another object. For example, this script will play a sound if the grabbable flashlight is dropped on a table. To add a contact sound effect to the grabbable object in your scene. Number one. To add a contact sound effect to the grabbable object in your scene. Number one. Select the interactable item game object. So for example, bubble gum. So I'm gonna select this, mouse over this, and do F so I can zoom to it. All right, so this one, which is to my left. In the inspector, select add component, search for and select the contact sound player. I'm gonna close my rigid body, I'm gonna close my XR grab, and we are searching for contact sound player. I'm gonna type contact player. So now that script has been added. In the project window, go to assets, VR beginner, audio, and select a sound effect file. Try one of the four sound special sound effects, impact heavy, audio clips in the folder. So we're going to VR beginner, audio. Assets, VR beginner, audio. It's telling us to look at some of the impact heavy sounds. So scroll down, you can preview it. We have glass. We have this. Drag the file from the project window into the clips property in the contact sound player component. So again, right now, I need to select that bubble object. Here's my script, contact sound player. And I'm just gonna drag this into there. If you do this with multiple sound effects, the script will select one used randomly when the object makes contact with another. Try adding all four variants. So I'm just gonna add a bunch of these guys. So I might just add this. So right here says size is one. If I do four, now I can actually drag in some of these other sound effects. It looks like it's the same, but if I actually expanded it, you can see I even added glass and a drawer inside of there. You can now test the sound effect in VR, pick up the interactable object, you select it and drop it onto the block of table. You should hear one of the sounds that you've added to the context sound player component. Press mark step as complete. Challenge, add a closed captions for the contact sound effect. Now that you've added a contact sound effect for your object, Try adding a closed caption for the effect. Remember, you'll need to add the sound effect to the database and set its caption, text, and timing. In the context sound player component, enable closed caption checkbox. Test to check that you have implemented the closed caption successfully. If you need more guidance on this challenge, review step six and seven of this tutorial. So let's do the challenge. First thing we need to do is right here, in our contact sound player, we need to enable closed caption. Let's go back, let's open up our, you can see we have this here. Drop the audio click to add, and remember this is how we do these. So what we have to do is get the sounds that we did. So for this, let's see the sounds that I did. I did this, if I click here, it shows it to me. I'm just gonna drag this here. I click on this, it's this one. Click on this, it's gonna be this one. I click on this, it finds it for me. So, now that I have 
these. Let's go back and just check the guidance again. So add the sound effects to the database. We've done that. And set his caption text and timing. So, okay, for these random, since it's going to be random, I'm just going to say new line. And it's not humming. It's going to say hit table. And maybe after 1.5, I'll put silence. Do the same thing for this. I'm going to do new line, hit table. And at 1.5, again, silence. One more time, hit table. And 1.5, say silence. The last sound effect, hit table. One more after 1.5 seconds, say silence. And that is the challenge. I'm going to press mark step as complete. I'm going to close my database. And now let's actually test this. So I'm going to come here. Again, I'm on a Mac, so you have to go to File, Build Settings. I'm using Android as a build. There's my Oculus Quest. I'm going to do Build and Run. Before I do that, I'm going to make sure I do File, Save. And then now I'm going to do Build and Run. I'm going to overwrite my previous and do Replace. Once this builds, I should be able to test my game in my Quest headset. Okay, let's hide our menu. All right, here we go. So you can see it's, you can hear the sound and it's showing the caption humming. And if I turn, I can hear it in my left ear. You can see right here, it's showing the caption humming. So again, if I turn, I can hear it on the other side. Let's go away. If we teleport over here, I don't hear anything. Remember we said it had to be four meters. So let's go back. And the humming starts and you can see the caption. Let's go over to the table. Let's check out this bubble gun that we did. Remember when it hits the table, it should make four different sounds randomly. And it also should say hit the table, the caption. Let's see. There it goes. It shows hit the table. Let's do it a couple more times. Let's see what happens if we can hear some of those random sounds. So let's teleport away. Let's get this humming sound away. So I'm going to take this with me. I'm going to go far away. I'm going to go to the other side of the table. So I don't hear humming anymore. Now let's really listen to this. So it's still showing hit the table, and anytime it does, it's playing different random sounds. So everything is actually working. Now that we've tested this, step 10. In this tutorial, you have implemented audio and closed caption to enhance your VR experience. Next, you will learn how to set up your Unity project for UI development. Press mark step as complete. Woohoo, you've completed this tutorial. Keep going in the VR Beginner, the Escape project. In the next video, we will go through this.